Welcome to Find the Humor with your hosts, Matt Miner and Connor O'Leary. Hi, and welcome to Find the Humor, the podcast by and for aspiring comedians. I'm your host, Connor O'Leary. And I'm your other host, Matt Miner. And we're going to find lots of humor today. We definitely are. Uh, But quick, just an update. Uh, We are still recording remotely, so the audio is still a little faulty. Uh, Another reminder, I'm recording on Apple AirPods. So if you like this audio quality, go ahead and get yourself some Apple AirPods. Matt, what are you recording on today? I am still recording on my trusty old iPhone 8. Nice, nice. Uh, Well, with us today, all the way from... A remote location uh we have a, a good friend of ours uh matt waweru uh matt uh did improv with us a couple years ago when he was uh, in college with us and now he's still doing great funny things so matt say hello hello i'm matt i'm the guest that's great <laughs> uh <laughs> so we were briefly talking about this before we started recording uh but our host and our guest are both are both named Matt. Uh, so real quick, we're just going to find a, a quick way to differentiate between them. I proposed calling Matt host Matt and then our guest, guest Matt. Uh, but that is a mouthful. Uh, do you guys in the past couple minutes, have you thought of any better ideas? Um, you can do a Matt Alpha and a Matt Omega. But okay. who is who? That is for you to decide, my friend. Or should we just do an alpha and a beta so then we know who's in charge? Ooh, I don't know. It's a little kinky, but <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> um, all right, hmm. I'll be I'll uh, be Omega, and I don't. <laughs> okay, tell you what, we'll do this. But I'm also I'm digging the confusion that it's about to ensue, so we'll just see where it goes. <laughs> Wait, did I say um, I was Omega or Al- I'm Omega? Doesn't matter. I'm gonna forget. <laughs> okay. Yep. <laughs> so Matt, uh. Uh, guest Matt, Omega, whichever one you are, uh, we, as as you know, if, uh, listeners, we uh, go through our funny ideas that we have for stand-up sketch or really just anything at all, and we kind of just hash them out to see if we can find the humor. Uh, so, Matt, as this is a comedy podcast, uh, go ahead and just give us a brief introduction about your experience with comedy. My experience with comedy. Um, always been a fan of stand-up comedy. That's really that was my intro to comedy in general. Um, are, are you just wanting just my overall feelings and your feelings? Yeah, like, like have what you have done, you done? Yeah, have you done stand up? Have you done improv? Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, cool. Yeah, so big fan of all those things. Uh, grew up actually wanting to be a stand up, and then my mom was like, "That's not realistic," and kind of beat it out of me. And then I got to college, and then. I was reading The Exponent, and I saw that there was a stand-up comedy club, and I was like, oh, sweet, I want to go join that. So I went after band camp all by myself, still wearing my band uniform. I brought my trumpet with me. I went to the show alone. Um, I was just, like, talking to these guys in the audience because I was alone and bored. Um, And then, like, as the show was starting, there's a PowerPoint, and in the PowerPoint was like, there's auditions coming up. And then being like the first week of school, these guys were like, you should audition. You're funny. And I was a freshman. So I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Um, And that's honestly, that was like my jumping in point. Learned immediately that it was an improv comedy group and not a stand up. (laughs) And that's how I started. And then ever since then, just did the improv thing for four years, uh, then graduated, did stand up in and out for since i've graduated and then miscellaneous silly rap songs and sketches and dumb things that's so so great pretty much i love i love that immersive experience you had getting into improv when you thought it was stand-up i just (laughs) yeah like i love the idea of like you know like 20 or 30 people sitting in this classroom like so nervous that they're about to do improv and then they're like, all right, first up, we have Matt Waweru. And then you get up there and you're like, you guys ever think about cows? And they're like, what is going on? Yeah, it was uh, very different. But that, it grew on me a lot. And it was like my favorite thing I did in college. So yeah, that's awesome. no regrets. 
Yeah, that's super cool. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty pretty standard as far as the experience with comedy goes. Me and Matt are also having very similar uh, experiences. Uh, so that's awesome. Touching, I guess on, we... touching on improv, yeah. though, really fast. I feel like every successful comedian ever has had an improv phase, you know? Like, everyone did, like, improv in college or, like, stuff like that. Just because, like, college isn't really a place where you can do stand-up, really. Depending on your city that you're, like, college oh, yeah. in. But, like, there are very few colleges or universities where, like, stand-up is a viable option. Yeah, and I'm so jealous because uh, I have a f- couple friends that go to school at, like, Northwestern or U of I. Just, like, you know, colleges near Chicago. And they're always talking about... Uh, like I'll see them at Second City or like we're taking online classes now so we'll just be talking and they're like yeah I'm, it sucks like I, I don't have any opportunity uh, to do stand-up anymore because of, of the quarantine and whatnot and I'm like oh what types of stuff would you do would you just do open mics around campus and they're like no I would go to Chicago and I would <laughs> go to a bar and do open mics and stuff and I'm just like that's I'm so jealous all we have is like our, our club, which is, you know, still like cool that we have that, but in like a lot of, a lot of places don't even have an opportunity like that. Uh, but it is, it uh, makes me so jealous when I'm like, oh, you're doing comedy for like real people that want to see you fail. So it's adding to the fuel of your hatred of yourself, which makes you funnier. I'm so jealous. <laughs> but yeah, no, improv, definitely uh, a lot of people, a lot of comedians do improv. And I don't know, I, I think it is like a good way to like naturally find a comedic voice because it's I don't know if if something's too rehearsed I feel like it might not be so funny so improv kind of like reminds you how to keep it fresh I agree with you that. Keep, yeah. you keep it fresh Matt I try to all right I do I yeah I will admit that's one thing that like doing stand-up improv sort of influenced a lot is I don't like to do the same thing a lot like yeah I have like I'll do this set on this day and this set on this day and I'll work like two different ones just because like I do like the variety that improv provides of like, oh, this is going to be completely different every single time. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Well, in that case, um, we're going to see how fresh you can get. Yeah. So, Connor, I think just to show him. The <laughs> well, we're going to have him like rap battle us. Oh, is that a let's see how let's fresh go. you can get. <laughs> Oh, no, I was just talking about jokes, but if Matt wants to rap battle, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, no, I don't want to. I don't want to reveal that skill or lack thereof of any of us. All right, Connor, um, but what's your other skill? Well, this is about jokes, so let's hop into some jokes. Um, you go. I think you should go first, Connor, just to show us the ropes. You know. Okay, that's fair. Um, now, uh, since uh, Matt, your experience is mostly with uh, improv and stand up, I'll probably stick to just. Various stand-up ideas, uh, so I'm just going to scroll through and pick a funny, uh, uh, or not a funny, but a random one. Uh, boom, this one. It says, do you ever open up your laptop and just stay in nature picture? Ah, uh, yes. This is, uh, I don't know if this is very funny, but it is something that I do frequently. Uh, if I know I have a lot of work to do. I'll open up my laptop, and uh, I have a Windows laptop, so sorry to all you Mac users out there. But uh, in Windows, what they do is, like, the screen before you type in your password is always, like, a different picture of nature. And uh, it's always so pretty. And I think that you have the option to change it to be, like, the same picture every time if you want. But, like, the default is that, like, every couple days it changes to a different beautiful natural picture and uh every time there's a new one i will spend like five minutes just staring at it being like wow look how pretty that is and i'm really just uh, you know procrastinating so i don't have to do work but i don't know do you guys do that yeah (laughs) i uh not even with that just in general any excuse to like be distracted when i don't want to do something i will do it yeah that's fair yeah. And the the worst I think is phones. Like I will constantly be like, "Oh, I have to check my calendar." And then I'll hop on my phone and then my thumb just by default presses the Twitter button and it's like, "No, no, 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 no." And then I get sucked in and I'm lost. Yeah, and then you're in the loop of like Twitter. All right, let's see what's happening on IG. Maybe yeah. see what's happening on Snapchat. And then, yeah. oh, I haven't been on Twitter in a while. It's a vicious <laughs> cycle. And then like 20 minutes later in the back of your head, you're just like, wait a minute. I got on my phone to do something. 
and then you eventually do it but so much time has gone by yeah no that happens all the time and i recently downloaded tiktok so it's about to get a lot worse i'm assuming oh no i know i didn't want to but no I'll do, sometimes sometimes after i watch a movie my tv will just start doing those like random pictures it'll just like uh, yeah, pop up yeah, yeah and then it'll just like change every like two minutes and I get so fascinated by some of them because there's, like, no, like, continuity or anything. And so occasionally I'll just try to start narrating in my head what the picture is about and then somehow tie the two pictures together. Like, the first one will be, like, this picture of, like, this girl's eyeball that's, like, done, like, a lot of makeup really well. And then the next one is a picture of, like, a Jimmy John sandwich. And I'm like, okay, Larissa is on her way to Jimmy John's, but there's an issue. And then I have to tie in the next one. And then I just, honestly, I should start writing movies like that. (laughs) I was going to say, like, that would be super fun to do that during, like, a commercial break of a sitcom. Just, like, finding a way to relate Cymbalta and uh, progressive auto insurance and, like, all these things. And then making it, not only relating them, but also making it, like, a narrative story. (laughs) That's super fun. Um, But, yeah, no, speaking of, like, uh, your like after a while your your tv will start doing weird stuff um i was watching netflix the other day i was watching Shit's creek great show and uh after a, like three or four episodes netflix asked me are you still watching and uh i i knew that it did that but i remember like i feel like it used to do that every like 10 episodes and i hate that i know that it's gotten shorter because i in the past would let myself watch 10 episodes of a sitcom without ever touching the tv remote and then it would ask are you still watching uh but i i have noticed that it's it's gotten shorter before it asks you that uh, and i just found out it's because uh streaming services lose money if you're streaming something but you're not watching it and that totally makes sense but uh, I just I, I thought that was interesting. I just noticed that the other day. That's really interesting you say that because I feel like Hulu is like the exact opposite where they don't give a fuck if you like fall asleep <laughs> and wake up and it's like season 17. Like, <laughs> I feel well, like that's see, they roll the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And they can do that because they have uh, advertisements placed in to them. I, I, am I correct? I don't have Hulu. But do they have advertisements? Some, yeah. There's like a version you can pay for that, or like that's free that has ads, and then if you pay for it, no ads. I oh, have the okay. one that has no ads, and like oh, for dang. example, I took a nap yesterday. Just like I was watching, I, I was watching Brooklyn Nine Nine, a show I've already. Nice. Um, <laughs> and I fell asleep, and it was like the start of a season, and I woke up, and there's like a new character that I forgot shows up, <laughs> and just random things have happened in the story that i was like man i missed quite a bit yeah it's like an episode you've never seen before and you're like huh i must have skipped this one when i watched this series the first time and then hulu interrupts the screen and they're like no no you've been streaming for so long we had the writers write new episodes for just you. to keep you entertained <laughs> man, how long did you fall <laughs> asleep for you i dude i slept for like two hours and it did not stop the whole time that's and awesome. Then when I woke up, I just started watching it as if I had been up the whole time, and I was like, "Wow, I missed quite a bit." It's like Hulu and I didn't is go your, back. It's like Hulu is your girlfriend who's like, "Did you fall asleep?" You're like, "No, no, I've been awake the whole time." What? I was listening. Remind that's me so of funny. this specific detail though, because I uh, I'm confused. Yeah, I confused. I missed it. I blinked really long, but I was awake. Yeah. So I'm I'm currently quarantining with um my mom, my sister, and my girlfriend the other day they were like hey we should have girls night and i was like uh cool yeah i'm totally cool with that like let's do some face masks let's do some all this and they were like no no all we're gonna do to celebrate girls night is watch mama mia and that was all they had planned and i was like okay that's cool i i like mama mia but i just wasn't in the mood to watch it you know it's so i like the show but i i don't want to watch that movie again anyway uh, they started watching it and I wasn't really paying attention. I was on my phone and whatnot. And they started complaining about it. And then uh, they were telling story. Like my sister told a story about how she was dating a guy one time and it was that exact movie. They were watching it. And then she got upset because he was doing exactly what I was doing. And then my girlfriend got upset about that. She was like, yeah, you're not paying attention. That bothers me. And then I was like this. Whoa, this is 
because like in the same story my sister was telling uh she asked her boyfriend at the time uh are you even paying attention and he goes yeah it was like halfway through the movie and he's like yeah this happened this happened and those characters are in love and and like he knew the whole story he just wasn't looking at the screen and i was doing the exact same thing and then i was like oh my god i don't hate my sister's ex-boyfriend as much as i think i do because i totally get it <laughs> so you're a monster is what I'm yeah saying. that's what yeah, i'm, that's what I I'm saying too. cool that's what i'm saying but so. what you were saying what? about face masks i have a bone to pick uh, i think face masks are a placebo i straight up don't think they do jack shit for your face at all because yeah. every single time I, I that my I girlfriend you. convinced me convinces me to do a face mask the following days after it i have like 50 times more acne than i ever did before it maybe that's the effect and then that's how you keep buying No, that's it, the thing. That's what they do. They're literally trying to trap you into forcing you to buy their skincare. Ugh. Or maybe you're like, it's a user error and you're not noticing. Like, maybe it's like your, your girlfriend's like, hey, what if we uh, do face masks and eat peanut butter sandwiches? And then she puts the face mask, mask stuff on the counter next to a jar of peanut butter. And you're like, okay. And you just mix them up. Maybe that's happening. Uh, maybe you're uh, dipping your hands in uh, something really dirty before you apply the lotion to your face. I don't know. Have you have you done some scientific analysis to figure out if this is true or is it just based on observation? I love how your first idea of user error was that I was smearing peanut butter on my face. I don't know. It happens it's, to the best of us. I, I guess that's true. <laughs> Everyone's had a peanut butter face now and then. Yeah, my friend, you've seen the peanut butter baby, Yeah, you know? There's, there's a ah. video of a baby doused in peanut butter from head to toe. My friend tried to recreate that as a Halloween costume. And uh, uh, she got kicked out of the party because oh, no. <laughs> she was she had peanut butter all over. They're like, "This isn't cool." <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I know <laughs> it's so funny. What a controversial costume! <laughs> yeah, really brave of her to do that. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, do either of you guys uh, want to share any new uh, jokes or ideas or prompts or premises? Oh boy. I have, I have one to give give Matt a little bit more time to think. Uh, so gotcha, gotcha. So uh, I've always had this issue with weightlifting, and is it because you're weak? It's no, because you you can lift no. light weights. You know what I mean. You can you know, no matter how weak oh, yeah. you are, you can always lift some weights. You know, so it doesn't have to do with yeah. that. But it's just weird to me, like the idea of like I'm gonna pick this up and then put it back down, and then pick this up and then put it back down, and then pick this up and then put it back down, and then pick this up and then put it back down, uh -huh. and then I'm and I'm doing this to practice for when I really have to pick yeah, something but nobody, up, so I can no, do it. No one who lifts weights actually uses their muscles to pick stuff up later. You know? Yeah, that's fair. I've <laughs> I've thought about that. And, like I've thought about like what a waste. You know, like these people are so strong just. Not all of them. Like a lot of people are lifting weights so that they can, you know, be stronger for, you know, athletes or training, whatever. But people that go just to like look muscular, it bothers me. It's like, ah, oh, you could be building things. <laughs> I don't know what I think people use their strength for. I don't have experience with that. So I had to make something up. But yeah. And so I was doing some research and apparently, you know, like World's Strongest Man? Yeah. Uh, isn't that like a, a yeah. competitive it's, game show yeah, type thing? Is. Not a yeah, game it's show. Like, but... It's like a game. It's yeah. also just like a competition, you know? And so. Yeah, they flip the tires, flip tires and stuff. Pick up rocks, pull semis and stuff like that. So they have, yeah. they obviously wear lifting belts, but I learned it for multiple mm -hmm. reasons. So the first reason is just like the, you wear it to like remind yourself to like lift properly. But the other reason mm -hmm. is that it keeps their intestines from coming out of their anus. Yeah. That's, is what? that not that, the most how? insane that... thing that you've ever heard? They can lift so hard Hold on. that the pressure inside their body forces their intestines out their butthole. But the what is the belt? How does the belt prevent? Yeah, if I, it's I like squeezing just as much. Opposite. Yeah. Like, unless they've got like a diaper style belt where the belts like you know holding that, it in or it just like cinches it in so that the stuff can't go out you know yeah i don't know that's uh can you imagine being that strong i've i've also thought about that like being so strong about basically anything like self-manipulating your body like how 
you you're strong enough to bite off your finger but your brain just won't let you like just stuff like that it's 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 terrifying that we're able to do that the limits of the body know no bounds my uh <laughs> my coach in high school he was like a what, what sport uh he was my cross country coach which is also really interesting because Ooh. he didn't run and he was like jacked he was like a huge guy um and he his biceps were so big that he could not touch his shoulders like what yeah so like picture that like for his like he could touch the opposite one with the opposite arm obviously but like right he couldn't just reach up and like touch the one stroke like and to me that's like amazingly large it's impressive yeah. too. That's imagine insane. if he was so big that he couldn't reach across his chest and touch the other bicep with his other arm though <laughs> i feel like that would so be a fun. problem that having that limited of a range of motion oh god see the funny thing is when you said he couldn't touch his own shoulders I I went to do exactly that, like right hand to right shoulder. And my thought was, oh, yeah, I can see how someone couldn't do that. Not because I was like, wow, I can imagine my bicep being that big. But because I was like, yeah, that is kind of an awkward range of motion. It's easier to not do that. And I'm already tired. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. No, I, I so I got into weightlifting for a little bit uh, like a year ago. And I, I was always with a friend who was uh, a lot more experienced than I was. Uh, and I remember like, he, you know, he would be spotting me and he'd be uh, giving me advice and all types of stuff. And I remember one time I was just like looking around and I was like, do these guys that are like, you know, wearing these uh, like tank tops, noodle strap looking things, uh, you, like do these guys with their chest puffed out and their arms like not able to touch their hips you know what i'm saying like is that like just because they're that big or is that a power stance and he was like oh a hundred percent that's a power stance there's no way he and he like he's a pretty muscular guy so i just took his word for it he's like nobody has arms that are so big that they won't physically allow them to touch their sides and i was like ah i guess you're right i guess they're just making it up but no i looked around harder and there were some dudes that were so big with just huge muscles that i was like no it is impossible for that guy to touch his own hips i do not care his arms are too big and his frame is very wide he is not (laughs) touching his hips so yeah i i I believe that uh your coach couldn't touch his shoulders yeah Dude, and guilty pleasure of mine is, like, I think people that are, like, jacked are so cool. Just because, like, in the sense of the amount of time that it takes and commitment. Oh, like, yeah. even if you do, like, steroids. Like, it's not even, like, a gateway. Like, you still have to put in so much time and work. <laughs> I'm just like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you've ever seen, like, old Arnold. Like, Arnold Schwarzenegger used to be, like, this massive man. It's amazing. Or you, ever oh, yeah. at, and, uh, you ever looked at Dwayne yeah. The Rock Johnson? Like, Yes, I follow him on IG like religiously. <laughs> I just think it's so entertaining. No, you're. I wish. Yeah. That if no, it just like pop some steroids and then just be like pop, pop, and then just all of your muscles are just like start rippling out of your body and like expanding yeah, no, from where it's you. It's not like that. Yeah, but Matt, to your point, like at least The Rock is in like movies and stuff where he's like doing things where the muscles make yeah, sense. Yeah, exactly. Be different if he was yeah. like that big and he like worked in accounting. It's weird. Yeah, there's always that one guy. <laughs> yeah, have you guys ever been to like McDonald's and there's that one guy who's just like way too big for his shirt, and you're just like, okay, you work at McDonald's. What are you yeah. doing, trying to burst the sleeves on your McDonald's polo? Yeah, no, I I I feel that, but I feel like I always I, like I appreciate how much work it takes to become so muscular and strong like that, but at the same time, it's like yo, if this is just your hobby, like, there's so many better hobbies out there. Like, I don't know. Just, like, in my opinion, like, you sure, it's nice to feel good and lift weights and whatever, but it also feels good to, like, you know, watch TV. Heroin. <laughs> also. Heroin. I've heard there's that. Other hobbies. Can get a little pricey, but it's all right. You know what? Yeah. I don't know. Heroin As if the gym, gym membership, membership isn't expensive. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. So it's really just choosing uh, their own evils. I mean, heroin and a gym membership yeah. probably get you the same feeling, but uh, I don't know about that. I know. <laughs> well, speaking of somebody who's done neither very well, uh, and by that I mean I done haven't heroin very well. Uh, gone to the gym very well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just microdose high- heroin. Anyway, good stuff. <laughs> so, Matt, have you had enough time to open up 
that yeah. uh, archive of your also, jokes. And that's what's funny is like I've just been reading what I've had just because I haven't actually like gone back and looked at some. I just like keep going forward. So yeah, I'll same. give you an option. I found one from July 15th that I thought was funny. Or there's one I wrote this morning that is also, I think, okay. Oh, then we'll just have to hit both of them. You know, we have time to hear both of them. Oh, yeah, geez. Sure. All right. Um, so let's do the throwback first. All right. So All right, on cool. July 15th, <laughs> I like that I, I wrote like a title for it. And it's just like, I'm the thing that I'm afraid of. Um, and so the, oh. the joke goes, uh, when I first started college, I was nervous because of like how dangerous it is to like walk on campus late at night. And then one night I was leaving the library pretty late and I was walking home and this guy was walking towards me and I was like really nervous. And then he crossed the street and I was like, oh shit, what's over there? And then it took me like 10 minutes to realize that like he crossed the street because of me, just like this random black dude walking towards him late at night. And I was like, oh fuck, am I the thing that I'm afraid of? And then Ever since then, I was never afraid to walk anywhere on campus late at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I see similar, similar idea. I was walking on campus late at night one time, and uh, I, I just remember I was walking past like, like there were a bunch of cars parked on the side of the road, and uh, I was just walking somewhere, and then I heard a car door lock, and I, for some reason, it scared me, and I was like, oh, shit, what, what's going on? And so I turned, because I thought it was a car door unlocking, and then a group of dudes were about to come out and beat me up. That's what I thought. So I turned around and looked at this car that just locked, um, and then I saw a, a girl in the driver's seat who put on like the hood of her hoodie and I was like, Oh no, she's scared of me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, God dang it. No, that it's, it's such a guilty feeling though, isn't it? It's like, Oh no, no, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm scared of everything. For sure. Because there's this moment of realization where you're like, Oh yeah, you don't know who I am. You don't know what my intentions are. So yeah, naturally. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's weird and fucked up. But I also think it's pretty intense to like go through life thinking that people are gonna wrong you. But <laughs> yeah, that's true. Just like everyone's yeah. like, and every single person I see at night is out to get me. Yeah, I feel like that would be. But like... also, I'm... yeah, I mean, I understand the yeah, fear though. Like people do get robbed and attacked and stuff. So who knows? Uh, but Matt, your situation kind of reminded me of that uh. That Key and Peel sketch where they're both gangsters, but they have no gangster attributes other than them being black. <laughs> so they're just they they like have fake guns and like, hey, give me all your money. And people like, oh yes, yes, of course. Like you're you're a gangster. And then like they start talking and then they're like really passionate about Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> I've never seen that. I gotta find that. that's really uh, funny. Oh, it's such a good sketch. Good stuff. Uh, so that was uh, July 15th of last year. Yeah. Oh, so you were still scared of walking around campus even as a senior? No, just in general. Just like flashback thought. Like that was. Oh, yeah, I see. I see. From freshman year. Yeah, it was probably when he was on his way to the stand up impro- the, the stand-up <laughs> audition. Just to have my <laughs> dream so funny. shattered. Yeah. And then. <laughs> yeah, no, I I'm remember. imagining the person crossing the street <laughs> just because you're still in your band uniform. <laughs> it's just like. Oh no, the band <laughs> uniform. And you're like, is it because I'm black? But it's just like, just because you're in your band uniform. <laughs> Can't trust these bandies, yeah. bro. Well, I like thinking that it's like somebody who's really conflicted. They're like, oh no, there's there's a man walking toward me, but he is in a band uniform, but he's black. Well, but he is wearing really nice That's shoes. That's how you lure him <laughs> in, just man. Just like, keep going. The band uniform. <laughs> Yeah, all these people that are trying to wrong others and kidnap people, if you would just dress in a suit, people, you'd have a much higher yeah. success rate. Would not so, make that's my a target at all. Exactly. Yeah, what I if you rob a robber, though? Uh, no, what would happen if, like, some, like, so some guy's out on the street, and he's like, I'm going to take some wallets tonight, you know? Yeah. And then he goes up, and he's like, give me yeah. your wallet. But the dude who he's robbing, has like six wallets because he's been taking other wallets. Ah, oh. what do you think? How do you think? That, how do you think that yeah. takes down? Do you think it's like a they dap each other up? They're like, all right, we're just trying to do the same thing out here. No, or... nice. No, because like I've always that that plot has always stressed me out in like TV shows. Like 
like in Breaking Bad or something like that, if somebody who the, like the protagonist is doing something illegal and then they're wronged, it sucks because it's like, ah, oh, they can't go to the yeah. police. They can't do anything. No about honor this. among thieves. It, it's just, it's so, ah, I don't know why that stresses me out. It's just like, oh no, what are they going to do? And you know, that's how stories Do you want to know work. a really dumb thing that stresses me out still to this day? Yes. Related to of all course. of this is I, I have a fear <laughs> that one day somebody's going to be like, give me a wallet, punk. And I'll like give it to them. And then they'll be so disappointed at how little money I just have in general. And I don't know how they're going to react to how poor I am. <laughs> and they're like, oh, shit. Do you, yeah. do you need some it's help? Like, oh. It's like that like, tweet that's like, I got mugs, but little does he know is that I only have $4.87 on my debit card. <laughs> I know. Like, that. Like that's what I mean. It's like, will I just be disappointing somebody to the point that they're like, oh, you know what? Just take it back. Like, that hurts me. Yeah. And then they're like, hey, buddy, you should really get into yeah. crime. Oh, I also, you know that coupon is expired uh, in your wallet, right? I read this other story <laughs> about this guy who in his apartment in college only had like a mattress in his apartment. And like that was pretty much it. And then like some clothes. Somebody broke into his apartment while he was there and was like, bro, you live like this? And then <laughs> left and then came back with furniture. <laughs> Uh, exactly. Oh my god, it's, but like, it's just Santa like Claus. I, I don't I doubt it's real. But just the concept of that is just so applicable to the situation of just like a thief being like, Oh, come on, man, you're worse off than I am. And then yeah, just, like you can do better. Exactly. Yeah. No, with the the whole idea of the, the wallet thing, I've also had a similar fear of like uh getting mugged and somebody being like, Give me all your money and then I pull out my wallet and like all I have in my wallet are like gift cards to restaurants I haven't been to since I was in high school and uh, my debit card and my credit card. And that's, that's all I have. And like, yeah, sure. They want that debit card and credit card. Um, but on the off chance that they're like, no, I don't want to leave any traces of my crime. I just want your cash. I'm going to be like, sorry, dude. I don't know what to tell you. It's the 21st century and I don't have your little paper monopoly money. Same thing happens with like, Girl Scouts and, and homeless people. I'm always like, man, I wish I could help, but it's not the middle. If I was a thug, anymore. I'd be like, hey, give me your Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> give me your Venmo. Oh, I feel like that. So you have to walk around with like a square, and you have to like <laughs> swipe all their cards there on the spot. Be like, I'm gonna swipe it, and then I'm gonna give it back. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> like it's just like a, a a mugger who's like insistently uh requesting like a hundred dollar <laughs> payments from you and you're just denying them for the rest of your life i love that <laughs> give me your cash app uh well matt you you gave us reference to another more recent joke uh, uh i'd love to hear that cool one as well. all right this one i wrote this morning quarantine is the worst quarantine is worse than prison for me because even convicts have cellmates or roommates, or whatever you want to call them. Oh, yeah, you dude, I live right in a now? studio apartment. I have been alone the mm. whole time of quarantine. I'm on, I think this is the end of week three. So it's been a lot of time oh, to geez. spend with not another human being. Wow. Yeah, see, on campus, I live in a studio, and I had to make the choice. What uh, Do I want to go back home and live with my family, or do I want to... Uh, stay in my studio apartment and then once i realized the severity of the fact that like i wouldn't really be able to leave at all i was like no nah, i'd rather have i'd rather have people around to keep me sane and uh i'm for the first you know up until recently i've been like that was absolutely the right choice then you watched mama um, mia but now old <laughs> high school then you got yelled yeah. at during <laughs> and I was like, everybody mama hates mia. me <laughs> Um, but no, like old, old high school things are, are coming up where it's, it's like stuff that you'd get in trouble for in high school. And it's like, oh, I really didn't like yeah. this part okay. of living yes. here. That's and- perfect because that is exactly why I haven't gone home yet is what you're saying. Like, I, oh, okay. like, I love my family and they're great, but I like that now I only see them for X amount of time because our family, like we we're very, mm-hmm. we argue a lot. That's how we communicate is through yelling which is fine and it's cool, but I have graduated high school and I haven't lived at home in a very long time, long term. So my thought was if I 
went home too soon into this quarantine biz, like, I wouldn't have an excuse to leave. Whereas if I showed up, like, yeah. now knowing that there's at least another month, like, I can leave this upcoming week and hang out until the end of April. And if it gets extended, then oh well, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, how how is it living alone? Like, that sounds, like, I, I don't know. I feel like I'd it's, go crazy. You know, I am kind of introverted, so I don't mind it, like... I've lived alone in the studio for two years. Oh, okay. But it's just, it's boring. Because, like, my thing, and the reason I live in a studio is because I would always be out doing stuff. So I didn't see the point in having, like, a huge apartment. But now that I'm only in the apartment, I okay. have done, I wrote a whole podcast. I've been learning my guitar all over again. My fingers hurt. I've been listening to music. Uh, I've been writing. Just all the things. But here, yeah. It's, <laughs> after, like, week two it's like yeah, what else pretty is pretty much a question connor and matt would you rather go live with your families or be in prison Ooh, because that is the premise Ooh, that's uh uh i'd say families during wait families quarantine. during a quarantine or just families during quarantine would i rather oh i feel like i could do that well i couldn't do that i feel like i no i couldn't do that <laughs> i would go family i'd get picked Only on because my thing with prison is one what if you end up liking it more than your family and i don't want to know that um <laughs> two um, i just what if my my issue with the prison thing is like i don't want to go there and like oh man this dude fucking sucks because like i know what i'm getting with my family but like in a prison setting it's like man julio's been such a dick today what's going on and i gotta like figure out my cellmate situation with some peer mediation shit nah yeah <laughs> No, I I had the same mentality going into, uh, like, my roommate situation freshman year of college, which was, like, uh, I don't want to go random because that's rolling the dice. I'd rather go with something I know that I yeah. kind of like, which is uh, your equivalent of the family. Uh, and, see, I don't know if that was the right – and I'll never know if that was the right choice because I, I definitely knew some guys on my floor that were – uh, they would have been terrible roommates, but I definitely met some guys that would have been great roommates. So yeah, you'll never know. So I think I think because of that, the the family option is the better better I will choice. Say, in that in college, I went random roommate my freshman year and my <laughs> sophomore year. My freshman year, I had two different roommates because one moved out halfway through the year. Um, I liked both of my freshman mm. roommates. The first one was cool. He joined a frat and he like had came to Purdue late, so he wanted to just live in the house. The second dude transferred to mm. Purdue halfway through his freshman year, and me and him were super cool. We, like, watched Yu-Gi-Oh! and stuff on Netflix together. Like, it was super <laughs> chill. But my yeah, sophomore sweet. year roommate is, like, the bane of my existence, and I've never hated a... – I don't even remember what his name is anymore. And I fucking hate him to Dang. this day because he was, like – he was he was from the West Coast, so he would stay up super late because that's when his friends were all free, and he would, like, game all night, which was, like, super awkward. Because then, like, he just also never left the room. And it was, like, a very small dorm room, as it is. So I always felt like I was in his space mm. when I was in the room. And then, like, I would get back. Like, if we had a show or something, like, and we'd have the party after the show, I'd get back, like, hella late. And he would just be gaming. And it was very uncomfortable. Because, like, you're in this state of, like, oh, I've been around all these people and having all this fun. And he's, like, he wouldn't say hi. Like, I'd be, like, hey. And he'd just, like, look at me. And then he'd look back to his computer. It was, yeah. Damn. Not a bit. I mean, I live my That's place. insane. Yeah. I lived I lived next door to a guy that was like that. He uh it, it was like the exact same scenario and I was friends with uh, his roommate so he would always tell me those exact same things. But it even sucked for for me because he'd be up all night gaming with his West Coast friends and uh he he would be like loud about it and he was laughing and like the RAs had to get involved uh, like a few times. And it was just terrible. Yes. So at one point, I made a sticky note that said, hey, can you – it was, like, very rude. Uh, I would never do this to somebody in person. That's why I did it on a sticky note. And it's like, hey, can you keep it down? Asterisk, uh, hashtag, you know, the F word, but blurred for uh, characters. Anyway, I slapped that on his door, knocked, and then ran back to my room. And uh, I went back 10 minutes later, and the post note was gone. Uh, but the – the thing that was funny about it was that I signed it the uh it was like your upstairs neighbors <laughs> so I just blamed it on somebody else and I was like maybe if the complaint comes from a different person than it always comes from 
he'll listen. He <laughs> didn't, he but didn't. that was fun. The end. The end. That was, yeah, that was freshman year. <laughs> well, Matt, we are about out of time. Yep. Thank you so much for helping us find the humor in certain things. I hope that you find the humor in quarantine. Uh, yes, definitely. That uh, is it's... my personal advice to everyone listening. Find the humor in quarantine because yes, everybody not go needs crazy. to do that right now because you got to find something good about it. Yeah. Matt, do you have uh, anything that you'd like to plug? Uh, do you have any YouTube channels or Twitter accounts or anything at all that you'd like the people uh, to find you people on? People can follow me on Twitter at Matt Wawero, W-A-W-E-R-U. Um, other than that... Uh, I just got all sorts of stuff coming out with friends. Like you guys, me and Duncan have been working on music. I don't know when that'll be done, but eventually it will be. Um, and you should go follow at all of his stuff. Yeah, definitely uh, follow Duncan if you want to see more of uh, his friends, uh, which include me, Matt, and Matt. Uh, I think his account is called Goddard Videos, G-0-D-0-R-T. Productions. Productions. Yeah, production, not videos. Uh, yeah, so definitely check him out on YouTube uh, for more of that content. Uh, Matt, again, thank you so much for, thank you for being having on the me. show. It was so fun. I'd love to come back today. Yeah. And as we close every episode uh, with the classic uh, fairy t- or the classic fable, uh, the cow jumped over the moon. Matt, finish that, that line. And we'll be back soon. This has been Find the Humor with Matt Miner and Connor O'Leary.